Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got something a little different for you. To celebrate International Scrapbooking Day, I've pulled out all of my card making supplies and I'm going to make a one page mini album. Now this video is part of the Scrap Your Heart Out YouTube hop for 2020 and we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing a full day of edited videos today and then tomorrow we'll have a bunch of live videos. So I've got links down below to the next stop in the hop and details for the live videos tomorrow. So I'm going to show you um, this little mini album that I made and I'm I'm super excited about it. I decided on like a fun comic book theme and this book is for me. I've made mini albums before and given them away as gifts and I always really liked them when I was done but you know they were a gift for mom or grandma or somebody like that and I've never actually finished a book for myself. So this time when I went into it, I knew it was for me. And so I picked pictures that just brought back different memories. And I didn't worry about putting them in any specific order. Um, they just, I just made a bunch of little collages. So I just love how it turned out. So let me show you how to, to put one of these together. First, let's start with the album. You need a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. Um, a full 12 by 12 is important. It's it's really helpful. Sometimes you get them and one page or a page can be like 11 and 7 eighths. Um, if that's the case, then you need to trim it down and then you have to take that uh, sliver that you had to trim off and divide it equally among the squares. But if you can start with a full 12 by 12, you're much better off. Incidentally, this is a piece of uh, basil paper. So if you're wondering what brands, basil's great because it's a, a 12 by 12. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is put it in the score pal and then at every three inches we're going to just score a line all the way down. So you can see I've got three, six, and nine inches and that gives me four long panels and then I can rotate and put it back into the um, score pal 90 degrees off and then do the same thing. Three inches, six inches, and nine inches. And then that's going to give us 16 squares that are each exactly three by three. Um, you do want to take your time and try to get these exactly right. Um, it'll make a, a difference. And then I'll bring in the trimmer and I'm going to just go down three boxes, up three boxes and down again. So you can see I'm just kind of skipping that bottom box and um, pushing up with the trimmer. Then I'll come down and come all the way down except for the top box there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the first row. So I'm skipping the bottom box and pushing up. And you'll see that that gives us sort of a W shape. Again, you wanna make sure your measurements are correct as you're doing that. And then I'm just gonna go through and kind of fold the rows here, making sure that they're square and aligned. The more time you spend getting everything lined up initially, the better your book will look. It'll be a, a better finished product. So then I'm just going to go through and accordion fold each of those little squares. And when I get to that middle of the W there, I just had to reverse the fold on the line there uh, on the, the main rows. And then I can just keep going accordion style the rest of the way. And I am again, I'm, I'm taking care to line it up and I'm not pushing too hard yet. Now, when I've got everything uh, folded, I can make sure that it's nice and tight and square, and then I'll use my bone folder to just reinforce those creases. And if you need to make any sort of like little adjustments, this is the, the time and the place. And you can see if you didn't have a true 12 by 12, doing the math to make each one of those squares exactly identical would be kind of a, a hassle. So that gives us kind of the skeleton for our book. Let's zoom in a little bit here and then I will start gluing it together for you. So I have just kind of skipped past the cover and the inside of the first page and I'm gluing the, um, the first page basically together. And then you can see I'll open it up and then I'm getting to the next page and I'm just gonna glue those together. And if you're wondering, it doesn't matter if you use pattern paper that has one side or two. Um, you're only going to see the um, one side of the paper for the majority of the book. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell on the screen here, it's kind of hard to see, but this paper has texture on one side and it's smooth on the other. Since I'm going to be doing some stamping, I chose to put the smooth side facing out inside my book. So the only areas where you're seeing um, the texture 
on this book when I have it all glued together is the front and back cover. Um, all of the internal pages, they're all doubled up. So all of the texture is going to be glued to itself inside the book. If, if that were pattern paper and you had um, like the, the print on one side and it was white on the other, I would have all of the white on the inside um, like tucked and glued to itself. Um, and only the front and back covers would show the white. The rest of the book would have the pattern. So just bear that in mind. Um, if you... If you're gonna make one like this, you can absolutely use just single-sided uh, pattern paper, but do try to find something that's pretty stiff. So once I've got my pages kind of all glued together here, I'm just gonna make sure everything looks good. And you can see we flip through and we've got a little book here and we have eight little spreads, eight little two-page spreads inside the book, plus the front and back cover to decorate. So I'm going to put a block on that to dry, and then I'll bring in the decorative elements. Now I have gone ahead and printed out my pictures. Um, they're two inch squares, and I just used some post-it notes to hold on to the pictures. Once I kind of figured out what I wanted to group together and what order, there, there's not any chronological order, so it wasn't really hard, but I just kind of picked one or two pictures uh, for each little spread, and then put them together and drew a little template on those post-it notes. And I decided on a comic book theme, so I've got um, some new stamps and dies from iCrafter, and I've got links down below. These are a lot of fun. There's the comic words here that has like a speech bubble and those little like exploding boxes there. Um, I die cut a bunch of those, and I even kept some of the negative parts so that I could use them for stenciling if I wanted. Um, again, it has that, that matching stamp set too. And then I've got the new Happy Birthday Wiper inset. This makes um, like a pop-up card. It's, it's designed for a pop-up card, but I wanted to add that to the inside of my book. I love interactive cards, so... So this was, you know, I needed to add something interactive. Um, this wiper is a little bit too big for a three by three card. So I just trimmed it down a little bit. I cut it initially the, the full length and then I just slid it down and cut the top off with just partial die cutting. And then you can see it fits right inside my book now. Um, I have two little arms. Those are just scraps that I cut, uh, a scrap that I cut diagonally. And I'll show you how to put it all together. I pulled out my Cosmic Flare stencil. This is also new from iCrafter. It's really cool because you get um, a couple different size rays, so you just rotate it and, and you get a lot of um, variation there. So remember I said the front and back are single-sided and the internal pages are all doubled up? I decided to cut two smaller squares. They're, they're almost exactly three inches square, but I wanted them a little bit smaller so I'd have like a, a matted edge. And I happen to have this die. Um, it's it's a fantastic size. It's part of um, the exploding shaker box. But I also pulled out this little pocket that's in that die set. Um, and it, it just gives me this cool little pocket that I could stick a tag into. So I, I wanted to include that as well. So I can do a little more journaling. I cut that tag with a, a punch that's got to be older than my kids. <laughs> but I had it in my stock. Um, so I pulled it out. Now, for most of my sentiments, I use the new Carly alphabet, which is awesome. You have uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and punctuation all in one set, which is really cool. And I just went ahead and stuck all of my little, uh, the lowercase letters onto a piece of tape. I grabbed uh, my little pokey tool, and then I poked through the front and back of the tape there, so that when I run this through my machine with um, some cardstock in there, I can treat it like it's one die and then I can just kind of poke them out. I'll see where the holes are there. And I did it over and over. I think I did like five or six passes and I had plenty of letters. All of the extra ones I just kind of store in the back of that pocket. Uh, for extra decoration, I've got those heart hands. Um, they were just in my stash, which I love. I needed a tiny little heart. So um, I grabbed it out of there. Check your stash, see what you've got. Um, and then for some scripty sentiments, I've got the super that I cut from black glitter cardstock and my hero that's just regular black cardstock. Those are both dies from Heffy Doodle. I also cut some strips of ease out of black cardstock so that I can write on those with my white Posca pen. It's a great pen um, and I thought it would feel comic booky. Um, also, I do want to point out I'm using Heffy Doodle memo tape to keep track of those little letters. It's, it's much easier. 
And then I have this Mama Elephant die that's the city and street, which I thought felt comic booky. And then I also grabbed my new Sassy and Crafty comic book uh, stencils. This is a, the, both of these come in the same package, and they also include all of the little cutout pieces. So if you want to use those for masking, um, you've got those there, which is super handy. I didn't actually end up using that in the book. Um, I thought I would, but I didn't. Um, I'll use them for something else. So let's get started with the stamping. I'm not going to make you watch all of it. I just want to show you kind of the little tricks that I needed to figure out for stamping on a book because it's not super flat. So um, I just kind of used the little sketches that are on the bottom of my post-it notes to figure out uh, where what pages I wanted stamping on or stenciling. And then I kind of lined up the, the photo and the words with the stamps underneath so I knew where to put the stamps. And honestly, I am a huge fan of my Misty. I use my Misty whenever possible. And I probably could have figured out a way to, to get this book in there and, you know, shimmed it up or padded it up or something to make it work. But since it's a comic book style and it's supposed to feel kind of like that, the old printed, um, you know, dots and stuff, I wasn't worried about it. I just decided to go for it and it turned out just fine. So some of it, some of the bigger uh, stamped areas are not going to come out perfect and I'm not going to worry about it, mostly because again, it lends itself to the, the style and because I'm going to cover up the bulk of it with my little photos. So um, I stamped those stars on one side and then I'm going to come in with this halftone dots here and I'm going to try to stamp it on the opposite page. But here's where I had to kind of do some engineering. <laughs> um, I can't keep the book from popping up so what I decided to do was come in with a piece of purple tape and I just was, um, you know, lowering the tack a little bit so it wouldn't rip the page. I doubled it up and put it inside and then it was just grabbing two pages and popping up. So I uh, opened it up again, grabbed some more purple tape, and then I just sort of taped down handles, basically taping it to my mat and then taping the pages to themselves so that it stays flat and that way I can stamp. And I went ahead and did that. And you can see it's not perfect, but it feels comic booky, So it, it works just fine for me. And again, most of it's going to be covered. So I went through the book and I just kind of stamped according to my sketches there. And then when I got to this page, this is the page where I decided I wanted to stencil. So I'm going to bring in that Cosmic Flare stencil. And I did tape off the left side just because I didn't want it to go all the way across the whole thing. I wanted it to be... Um, sort of like three quarters stenciled and one quarter I'm going to put some die cut layers there so just to give the the spread a little more interest and with this stencil you do the the first half uh, the big openings and then you rotate it and you can do the other side if you want it to go all the way around it can just be like the sun flaring up from the ground or what I'm doing is having it sort of all the way around so rotate it and add the um the yellow all the way around and then I cleaned off my stencil and now I'm going to come in and add some of the the thinner um, areas the ink to the thinner rays there with the red and I'm being less um, less heavy-handed and I'm not going all the way out to the edge I just want to kind of add a little bit more and I'm not worrying about the center because the center is going to be covered by a picture so if I didn't get the circle right and it doesn't matter um, but I think that turned out fun so you can see real quick, I kind of went through the book, added some stamping. I do go back and color all those little stars in, um, but I didn't do that on camera. And then now we can start adding layers. I didn't want to glue in any pictures while I was still stamping because it would start to um, make the pages a little bumpy and harder to stamp on. So once I've got the stamping and inking done, now I can come in and glue the pictures and the little words in place any of my uh, bumpy layers. And so I'm gonna do basically the same thing here, and I'm just gonna show you this this first spread here. Um, but I am using PVA glue. I love this stuff. It's perfect for paper to paper, and uh, it dries quickly, it dries matte, and it's uh, safe for your photos. So I did that for the different layouts, and then I wanna show you the pop-up. Remember I said we have this little pop-up here? I am all about interactive cards, so of course I wanted to include something interactive in my book here. 
So I've got that die cut piece, and the first thing I want to do is just kind of fold it in half. There's a big fold line almost down the center, um, and it kind of separates it in two parts. And so I folded that up, and then you can see the, the little T that sticks out. That has all of the lines already die cut or um, embossed in there. So I'm just going to take the um, parallel lines to that big fold and fold them in half. And then you'll see that once you have that folded down, there are these little diagonal lines. Just work them back and forth on each other. And then you kind of pinch and push at the same time to tuck those little guys in. And I use my bone folder to make sure my creases are nice and, and everything's gonna lay as flat as possible when it's inside the book. And you can see, um, we're forming basically like an arrow here. Can you see that little arrow? And that arrow is gonna um, stick to the back of the little bubbly, the flat bubbly layer there. And um, that's where we're gonna add the glue. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm just getting glue all over the arrow. And then I'll push it onto the back of the, the bubbly pop-up part. I'm not sure what you would call it, the, the panel that actually pops out. And then you can see we just have this little spot here that that's the, the pop-up part. Okay, so now we'll put it into the book. And we're going to line the little legs up right in the seam. And then I'm going to add glue only to those little legs that are sticking down. And I'll close up the book and hold it for a second just to grab them. And you can see it sort of catches there and now we just need to attach the back side in order to, to close it up. So I just put glue on that thin little strip that we had folded and I'm making sure none seeped into the wrong spot there and it didn't and then hold it down and now you can see we've got this panel that pops up when you open that page there. It's pretty cool. But what's really neat is that you can attach these little wiper arms and then as you open and close the book, Those uh, the little speech bubbles that I've cut out to attach to the arms are gonna swing up and down. So what I did for each one, um, the, the die cuts out the frame and the inset, so I just kind of interlaid them together, like inlaid technique there, um, stuck them together, and then I glued them to these uh, little arms, and the arms are just scraps, basically. You're not gonna see hardly any of it, so it doesn't really matter what you use. There is a set in the um, die set that, or there's an arm in the die set that will work perfectly for you, but it was too big for what I was doing here. So I did the same thing to both arms, and then what I'm going to do is kind of tuck in the, um, the little speech bubble so that I know it's completely hidden in that book there, and I can just eyeball where it is. And I'm going to cut off the extra part of the leg. Like I said, that, that little arm there, we cut off most of it. And then I'll add a little bit of glue just to the bottom of it. And I found it helpful to use my tweezers to hold that speech bubble. And then um, from this angle, I apologize, you can't see, but I'm, I'm working at it front facing and you're looking at it from <laughs> above. Uh, so I was trying to tuck it in and make sure that it, it was in place when it was closed. And then you can see when you, when you open it up, um, it, it pops out. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other side here. Maybe it'll be a little easier to see this time. So I trimmed it down, grabbed it with my tweezers, and then I'm just going to go ahead and figure out the placement again, add some glue, and then tucking that um, arm into place. You can see with the tweezers it's handy because your, your fingers don't have to get in the way. I could squeeze it closed and grab it. But isn't that fun? One pops out from each side. And then it's just a matter of decorating this little spread here. So I had cut out some of those little tiny silver hearts um, out of the glitter paper that coordinated with the um, letters that I'm using here too. And I'm just sticking those on. I stuck down all of my letters and my picture. And I think it's a fun little spread. So I just went through the book and finished them up according to my sketches. And then remember the front, I said the front and back covers are only single pages or single pages, whereas the um, inside pages are, are two, two sheets uh, glued together. So I'm gonna fortify the front and back with those extra little uh, rectangles that I cut out from a slightly lighter color card stock. 
and I've already started decorating them. Um, I just glued down the little cityscape, the, the skyline and the street, and then I'm going to glue together these um, letters. And these letters are like the same ones you just saw on the pop-up. Um, I just switched up the colors there, but they're really fun and you can use them with or without the outline. So I put OMG and then I've already glued together the My Family is Super little burst there. Um, so I used the glitter cardstock, the black glitter cardstock for the word super. And I just used my, um, my pen to write My Family Is. I feel like with scrapbooks, you should have a little bit of your own handwriting in there, even if you don't like your handwriting like I do. <laughs> I don't like my writing. Um, so on cards, you'll never see me handwrite anything. I don't care if I have to spend an extra hour trying to, you know, figure out my alphabet stamps to make it work rather than just writing my own handwriting. But in a scrapbook album, I do feel like it's important to have a little bit at least of your handwriting um, and your real handwriting, not just not something that you're trying to make look like a printer. You want people to be able to look back at it later and say, you know, oh, that's mom's handwriting. So, so don't be afraid to include that in your books. So I did just a little bit of it. And then after I finished um, photographing it, I came back in and um, added a little more journaling with names and that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't put that in the, in the video. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ribbon around the uh, outside of the book. You saw me use some of that uh, score tape just to hold it in place. That will attach the ribbon to the book. And then now I can glue on my front and back cover. And I'm using the PVA glue this time. I am not worried about the glue sticking to that ribbon. Um, that PVA glue isn't probably the best option for ribbon, so I wouldn't have used it to attach the ribbon to the book. Um, also, you have to wait for it to dry and all that stuff. But since the um, since the covers are going to attach to the um, the book itself, I'm I'm not worried about the glue there. So I stuck a, a little block on it and let it dry and while it's drying I just want to remind you that this is part of the scrap your heart out YouTube hop I do have links to the next video down below There are prizes and lots of fantastic sponsors So make sure that you hop along and enter for your chance to win and then um, Don't forget tomorrow is a full day of live videos as well So I've got uh, links to Tiffany down below. She'll get you started and pointed in the right direction for the live video hop tomorrow So let's take a just a quick look back at my little book here all finished. I Hope that this has inspired you to give a little bit of scrapbooking a try even if you're not a, a normal scrapbooker like me and don't worry I'm not <laughs> I'm not going down the scrapbook road. <laughs> um, I'm still a card maker. I prefer cards because you have one and then you're done. Um, and with a book, I feel like it's a, a bigger commitment. You have to try to make things line up. But what I love about this book is that I didn't worry about what pictures. It's not one specific event. My collages have pictures from different times, completely different years, and just each one I can look at and it takes me immediately back. So I'm really happy with this book. If you are new to my channel and you're interested in seeing more videos, especially interactive cards, feel free to hit subscribe and ring that bell. And once you're done hopping, come on back and take a look at some of the other videos I've got going. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.